Okay, welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy Wednesday. Um, my thought for you is uh, on the act of Swami Satchananda calls it undoing, undoingism or undoism. And the idea of that is that we have built up layers and layers and layers and layers around ourselves of meaning of what we think we need in our lives, what we think we need to be happy, what we think we need to survive, what we think we need to um, feel secure, all of those things. We have these layers and layers and layers and we get caught in the loop of those layers, right? And your mind keeps telling you, but I need this, I need this, I need this, I want this, I want this, I want this. And it's rarely what we actually want, right? So my joke right before we started class is my daughter, you know, the phrase, I want an orange, rarely means that she wants an orange, right? It's that cue of, I need something. I need something and the only way I can articulate it is my mind grasps to this, right? An orange, it has nothing to do with an orange, right? So we're doing this all the time too. It's not just kids that do it, as we do it. But from kids to adults, as we build up those layers where, where when we think that it's an orange, it suddenly becomes something more complicated, more complicated, more complicated. And then we grow up and we keep those patterns in place. Right? So we're always reaching for something that we're sure that we want, but it's never what we actually need. So the practice is to undo that, right? That's where Swami Satchinanda's word, undoism, comes in, right? That that is your practice, is to undo all of those layers of where we have attached our feeling of need to things that have nothing to do with what we need, right? So comfortable seat, if you're not there already, we are practicing undoing. Not so much the physical undoing of, you know, the way that your structure feels, but undoing that feeling that the mind grasps for um, a desire. It grasps for a thing that is sure is going to make us feel better, but it's not coming from an actual need. So with the eyes closed, find your breath. And contemplating, many of you have probably heard this, right? That there's this idea that there are five different, at least five different languages of love, right? The way that we give love, the way that we receive love, the way that we need to experience it for us to feel like it's real. And so in those early hours of the morning, trying to get a toddler to go to sleep, <laughs> I've been contemplating that, that the phrase, I want an orange, is really just a way of her mind saying, I need to be loved in this particular way. And as her parent, I'm trying to figure out, right, what is that actual language where she's going to feel what she needs to feel to relax. So this is what we're doing with each other as adults. Is can you pay attention to the way that you interact in the world and with other people, the way in which you are trying to experience love, the way that you give it and you receive it. And instead of reaching for something abstract that has nothing to do with those actual feelings. Can you understand your own language of love? This is the way that I give it and this is the way that I hope to need to receive it. It's the only way we undo that stuff of the mind is we have to have a different language. So let's try that. What is the language of love for you? A couple more deep breaths, just settling into that feeling that this practice has nothing to do with poses, not even about your hips or your shoulders. See that the same thing, I want an orange. I want my hips to be open. Okay. I hear you. You wanna feel safe and secure in your body. One more deep breath. And bring the hands together in front of the heart center, palm to palm, rub your palms. Again, just waking up the flow of prana, the flow of energy. And then steady the palms at the heart. Let something touch your heart center. So your thumbs or some part of your hand. And we'll open with the sound of Om, deep breath in.
and let the eyes float open. Nice, you guys, you can release your hands, please. And then still seated, uh, take your hands to your knees or your thighs and start to circle your torso, nice big spirals. Good. And say it's so funny, right? That we try to logic our way out of everything. Well, if I can just understand what my neurosis is, then I can live with it peacefully. <laughs> If I just logic it out, then it's okay that what I'm doing is completely irrational. And I just expect that that neurosis will be there forever. That paranoia will be there forever. That feeling will be there forever. No, thank you. Go ahead and move your torso the other way. So instead we're undoing that feeling or we're working to undo that pattern where we keep grasping for the same things thinking that it's going to make that feeling go away when all it ever does is push it slightly further away. Let me stay arm's distance to you, but never further than arm's distance. Good. And then come back to stillness, start to cat cow your spine, inhaling, lifting the chest up, exhaling, curling and rounding. Good, using the hands at the front of the knees or the thighs as an anchor, as a bracket, so that your arms can actually be mostly straight here, especially on the exhale. But as you inhale, you're really using that backwards pulling on the knees to lift your chest higher. Good. So start to assume that everything that crosses your mind is a desire, everything that crosses your mind is a want, everything that crosses your mind as a feeling of, I'm trying to get away from, something else. I'm trying to get away from that discomfort or that feeling or that void or whatever it is. I'm trying to get away. But every single one of those things is a cry for love. That's all. Whatever the words come, whatever the desire is, doesn't matter. It's all the same. It's a cry for love. So you learn your own love language. This is how I need to experience it for it to feel real. This is how I need to give it to feel like it's natural in me. Go ahead, come back to stillness, please. Nice, bring the bottoms of your feet together to Baddha Konasana, but a nice long Baddha Konasana. So let your feet move forward a little bit further away from your pelvis. If you need a blanket underneath your seat, go ahead and have it. Good, and then do activate the toes. So curl your toes back, but press the baby toes into the floor and then walk yourself forward, forward fold. Good, you can let the arms rest wherever they want on the knees or in front of the knees or in front of the shins. Good. Allison, I would just take your arms wider, however you place them, so that your shoulders have more space. There you go. Nice, you guys. And just feel the seat settling. Good. Do a little squeeze of your knees up towards your side ribs. And as your knees squeeze up, you're pressing your seat back. So again, lengthening the lower spine. Good. And then release the squeeze of the knees. And walk yourself back up, please. Can move your heels a little closer in towards your groin. So again, not as far, not the deepest in that you can get, but move them back a little bit more. And then this time, squeeze the knees up before you begin. So hug your knees up, pressing the feet down, arms up alongside your ears. Good. Keep the knees squeezing just a little bit and start to bow forward with no hands. So extend the spine forward, press your butt back. Good. Make sure that you're not squeezing your knees so hard that you can't get your ribs between them. <laughs> Good, pull long, pull long, pull long. Keep squeezing the knees. Good, and then let your hands touch down to the floor. Yep, press the hands down, drag back on the hands so you feel like you're pulling your arms into your shoulders and then round your back, drop your head. Good, so you're dragging back on the hands, rounding into your whole spine. Good, and then relax the squeeze of the knees. Relax into the forward fold, one more breath, dropping through the chest. And then walk yourself all the way back up. Good, and then bring the heels a little closer in again if there's space to do so. Good, and then arms up alongside the ears. One more time, active toes. So curl those toes back and press the baby toes into the floor. Squeeze your knees up just a little bit and then bow forward, extend through your spine. So you're moving your armpits away from your hips, pull long. Good, and press your butt back. Yeah, nice, nice, nice. And then release the hands to the floor, keep squeezing the knees. Drag back on your hands so you're pulling your chest forward as your arms plug into the shoulders. Good, keep pressing your seat back and down. Nice, and then release the squeeze of the knees, let them drop wide, relax your head. 
Good. And then walk yourself all the way back up. Nice job. Cross the ankles, please. Roll forward to hands and knees. And come back to downward facing dog. Good. Pedal your feet. Nice. And then steady your heels, bend both knees, please. So dropping the knees low, dropping your hips back and then cat cow your spine. Good. So of course I have this great idea, right? That I know that there is such a thing as the languages of love. And of course I didn't go look it up. <laughs> didn't have the time or the energy. <laughs> Right? But we don't necessarily need to know. We don't have to have the definition exactly of this is the way that I do it, but you have to start to comprehend, right? Because if it doesn't feel real to us, that's why we reach for the abstract things. We reach for the things that don't make any sense. Good. And honestly, sometimes it might not be a straight linear line between what makes us feel loved in the moment and what's logical to somebody else. I remember having multiple conversations uh, since my daughter was born with my husband where I just needed him to listen to the fact that I was struggling and he was immediately trying to tell me what was going to fix it or even worse saying, I don't know how to fix it. I said, I know, I don't need you to, I just need you to hug me. <laughs> Let your legs come back to straight, right? The language of love, I don't need you to fix it. I need you to just love me in this moment where I'm struggling. So this is all of us. And instead, what do we do? We say, I need an orange. <laughs> no, you don't. Good, drop down to your knees, please. Good, take your right leg up and back behind you. Left arm walks forward. So right leg lifts parallel to the floor. Walk your left arm forward to straight. Take your balance. Good, and a deep breath in. As you exhale, bring the elbow and knee together underneath you, round your back. Good, squeeze in. And then extend all the way back out, reaching through the arm and the leg. Good, exhale, squeeze in. Nice. And then extend back out. And exhale, squeeze in. And extend back out. Beautiful, bend the knee, kick your heel in towards your butt, reach back for the foot or the ankle if you'd like. Good, and kicking your foot into your hand, really lift the chest forward and up. Yes, you're reaching back for the hand, Maria, or for the ankle, Maria, you got it. Good, Susan, don't let your hips sway out to the side, try and keep them more center. So you gotta push them to the right, there you go. Good, slowly release, extend back out, please. Nice, then left hand finds the floor, take your right toes to the floor, leg is still straight, drop your right heel flat and take your right arm to the sky. Good. Inhaling, reaching through the right arm. As you exhale, wrap that right arm underneath your left rib cage. So reaching underneath you, back behind you. Good. Keep your hip open. You got it. So you're reaching under. Good. And then arm back up to the sky. Inhale. Nice. Exhale, curl it under again. Round. So you're keeping the hip open, but curling through the ribs. We're opening up middle back. And then come all the way back up. Inhale. Good. And last time, exhale, curl under, reaching. Nice, and then arm back up to the sky. Move your left shoulder forward over your left wrist a little bit more, and then really push through the baby toe of your right foot. So you're not taking that right foot off the floor. You're using the right leg to hold you. Push your hips up towards the sky. Take your left knee off of the floor. Yeah, yep. So you gotta push into that right leg. You gotta squeeze into your belly, curl through that hip flexor, pull that left knee up. Nice, Harriet. Good, Emily. Nice, nice, Maria. And then release that knee back down to the floor. Awesome. Come back to hands and knees. Press back child's pose. Staying close to the floor doesn't mean you don't have to work. <laughs> Good. Knowing your language. Is what are the things that are your creature comforts, right? The things that you run to for comfort and why? 
right? Is it something that you learn from your parents that I don't know, whenever I'm stressed, I, I eat this food because I watched my parents do it my whole life. Or whenever I'm stressed, I need to have this because it actually fills a void or it makes me feel really secure or it just makes that feeling go a little bit further away. Walk yourself back up to hands and knees. This is the undoing, right? Of just reaching for what we always reach for and assuming that it's going to make a difference when it rarely does. And we know that from experience. <laughs> take your left leg back and up behind you. Walk your right arm forward, take your balance. You got it. Good, deep breath in. And then as you exhale, bring the elbow and knee together underneath, you round your back, dropping the head. Good, and then inhale, extend all the way back out. Good, exhale, squeeze in again, round. Extend back out on the inhale. And one more time, exhale, squeeze in. Good, and then inhale, extend back out. Good, bend the left knee, kick your heel in towards your butt, reach back for the foot or the ankle if you'd like, or right hand can come behind your head if reaching for the ankle's not happening today. Good, don't let your hips sway out to the right. Keep everything center, kick your foot into your hand and focus on, can you lift through your upper chest? Draw your throat back. Good, sternum to the top of your mat. Awesome, nice Mark. And then extend all the way back out. Beautiful, good Sydney. And then release that right hand down to the floor. Take your left foot to the floor. Good, turn the heel to flat and then take the left arm up to the sky. Good, so you're still pressing through that right shin, stacking the hips as much as you can. Deep breath in. As you exhale, wrap that arm around and underneath your ribs, back behind your right rib cage. Good. Yeah, as much twist as you can get there. And then bring the arm back up to the sky. Inhale. Good. So you keep the legs stable. Exhale, curl under, reach under. Good. And round the ribs. So you're really pulling the ribs in the opposite direction as the, of the hips. And then inhale the arm back up. Good. One more time. Exhale, wrap that arm around underneath you. Good, and then inhale the arm back up to the sky. Nice, now you're pressing through the baby toe of your left foot. Move your right shoulder forward just a little bit so you've got the whole power of your back behind you. If your shoulder is behind your wrist, then you're gonna do a lot more work than you have to. Slide forward and then hug that arm up an inch, shoulder blade up into the center of your back. Pressing into the left foot, take your right knee up off the floor. You gotta engage your waist, engage the low belly. Good, maybe even pull that knee forward towards your elbow. Yeah, really work the hip flexor. Good, Emily. Nice on you. Good, Harriet. And then release that knee down to the floor. Come back to hands and knees, press back child's pose. Good. Say meeting those deep seated needs, the thing that I think confuses us is that it is irrational, that there's no requirement to stay with a logical frame of reference, right? That if I feel this way, this thing should make me feel better. Bullshit. It either does or it doesn't. Right? And for you, there might be a very particular way or thing that gives you that sense of relief or that sense of security. That's not based on just what you're used to, but it's based on a real feeling of need, a real feeling of connection. Come back up to hands and knees, downward facing dog. That's what I mean is we all have a language of love which may or may not fit perfectly into the categories that I know exist. Don't know them off the top of my head, but I know they exist. Someone did this work. Right leg up and back behind you, down dog split. Good, step that foot forward between the hands, lunge. Good, drop the back heel to 45 degrees, warrior one, inhale both arms to the sky. Good, making sure that your left foot is wide enough to the left that you're able to really spin that back hip forward. Good, nice you guys. And then straighten your front thigh for a moment. Good, turn your palms forward, hook your thumbs. And as your thumbs hook together, you bend your elbows just a little bit, lift your chest higher, and then stretch through the fingertips, pull up through your side waist, pull up through your ribs. You want to feel like you're squeezing your feet together and pulling up so much that you actually feel there is a little bit more space between your thigh and your hip bone. Good. Now maintain that feeling of pulling up and bend your front knee again. Come back to warrior one. Aha. Good. Nice, you guys. And then release the hands down to the floor. 
Beautiful work. Spin your back heel up. Step your left foot forward just a little bit. Take both legs to straight. Parsvottanasana. Use blocks underneath the hands if you'd like. Good. It's so interesting that in the Yoga Sutras, in the third book of the Yoga Sutras, that there is the suggestion that if you meditate, put your whole attention on the heart, that you will understand the mind. Why? Because our desires are not stemming from the mind. The mind categorizes and tries to make sense of irrational things, feelings, intangible things. So the only way to understand what your mind is grasping for, what it's really trying to get you, is to go to the heart, the language of love. How you need to feel it and how you need to give it. Good. Take your hands to your hips, come all the way up to stand. Good, don't change the legs, same position. Take your hands back behind you, interlace your fingers. Shrug your shoulders up towards your ears. So again, you get that side body length, same thing that you just did in that in between warrior one is pull up through your side waist. Good, press into your feet and pull up. Nice, now keep that feeling of lift and start to bow forward, taking your hips back and stretching the arms up and over any amount. Watch that that right rib cage doesn't come forward faster than the left. Good, so adjust it, Laura. Good, Stacy. Nice, right rib cage lifts a little higher, Lauren. That's it. Awesome, you guys. Nice, Stephanie. And then release the hands down to the floor. Nice job. Step your left foot forward alongside the right, standing forward fold. Good. Bend your knees, please. Walk your hands up onto your thighs. Cat, cow, and chair. Good. So what are we undoing in a yoga practice? We are undoing the fixation of our mind not just the fixation of what the mind is attached to, but our actual fixation at staring at our mind and thinking that there's answers there. There's a lot of answers, but they don't fit with the questions that we're asking. <laughs> there's a lot of nonsense in there because it's not attached to actual feeling or actual desire. So can you undo that fixation and actually feel? What is your own language of connection? What is your own language of love? How do you need to feel it? Good, come to stillness, please. Come all the way up to stand. Nice. Stretch the arms up alongside your ears. Good, interlace your fingers, press the heels of the hands up towards the sky. And again, pulling through the waist. Good, get taller and then soften the shoulders nice and wide and then reach to your right side body reaching. Good. Beautiful, come back up to center, please. Pulling up through your low waist, pulling up through your ribs again. Lean to the other side, to the left. Good, without letting your hips push out too far, right? You're taking it all through the side waist. Nice, Joanne. Good, come all the way back up to center, please. Beautiful, then exhale, release the hands down to the floor, forward fold. Good, step or jump yourself back to plank. Nice, lower down slow, coming through knees first if you need. Good, rise up into cobra, lift head, neck and chest. Good, and then come back downward facing dog, tuck your toes, lift your hips. Good, left leg comes up and back, down dog split. Good, step that foot forward between the hands. Good, take your right heel to 45 degrees. So turn the foot out slightly, maybe stepping it wider to the right. Warrior one, take the arms up. Good. Nice, you guys. Outer hip spins forward. So make sure your feet are wide enough to allow that to happen. Good, Anju. Nice, then start to straighten your front thigh, please. Again, inter not interlace, sorry. Turn your palms forward, hook your thumbs overhead. Give a little bend to your elbows so that you get that feeling of lift through your chest. And that bend to your elbows, again, you're engaging those muscles at the lower armpit. So that drags down like you're going to do a pull up, right? That drags down as your chest lifts. So there's engagement there. And then stretch your arms towards straight, but keep that armpit area awake. 
and then pull up through your waist again, ribs in, squeeze your feet together, lift your hip points. Good. And then maintain that and bend your front knee back into warrior one, but keep pulling through the sides of your waist. Keep lifting through the front of your hip points. Good. Nice. Yeah, there's not a single pose that is meant to make us feel like we are stuck. So if we do feel stuck, then there's a place for us to figure out why am I doing it this way? Good, release the hands down to the floor. Really nice, you guys. Spin your back heel up, step your right foot forward just a little bit, take both legs to straight, Parsvottanasana. Good. And our inner language is that language that says that I know how I need to feel loved. And if it hasn't been made available to me, I'll take the next best thing. And then if that's not available, I'll take the next best thing to that. And if that's not available, I'll take the next best thing to that. And before you know it, we've accepted something that is so far removed from what we really wanted. And we've convinced ourselves that it's good enough, or we convinced ourselves that it's the same, or it should be. So you have to understand your language, then you also have to understand how you have learned to grasp for things that don't fit, that don't compute. Take your hands to your hips, come all the way up to stand. Good, take your hands back behind you, interlace your fingers at the low spine, squeeze the legs towards each other, get super tall again through your side waist. Good, and then start to bow forward, taking the arms up and over any amount, focus on pulling your hips back in space. Really nice, Sydney. Thank you for turning on the light, now I can see you. <laughs> Good, a little more weight in your back leg, Anju. Nice, you guys, release the hands down to the floor. Beautiful, step your right foot forward alongside your left, standing forward fold. Good, and then take your hands to your hips, come all the way up to stand. Nice, take your right knee up and towards your chest. Good, pull it up and then hold it there. Take your arms up to the sky, so pull. Again, pull long through your side waist and squeeze into that low place of your abdomen, squeeze into your hip flexors, pull that thigh up and then push the top of your left thigh back. Yep. Nice, now take your right ankle on top of your left thigh, bend the knee, come into cross-legged chair, take your butt back. Still reaching through your side body, don't let it collapse just because you're taking your butt back. Keep pulling your ribs away from your hips and push your hips away from your ribs. That's the thing, right? We get into the pose and we think, all right, I'll collapse here. Don't. Good, come all the way back up, please. Pull that right knee up and towards your chest, no hands, pull long. That's it. And then take that right leg back behind you, warrior three. Good. As you lean forward, push your butt up towards the ceiling, navel in. Awesome. Nice, Laura. Nice, Stephanie. Good, Joanne. You got it. Beautiful, you guys. Good. Drop the hands down to the floor, please. Right hand stays where it is or on a block. Left arm comes to the sky, revolved Ardha Chandrasana. I know if you feel like you weren't ready for it, I feel like we're never ready for revolved Ardha Chandrasana. It just happens. Switch your arms, Stacy. Revolved. Yeah, twisted Ardha Chandrasana. Good. Nice, Allison. Just keep kicking that thigh up. Don't worry about the arm. Good. Release the hand back down, please. Nice job. Step back to lunge and come back downward facing dog. Beautiful. Vinyasa, if you'd like, child's pose if you prefer. If you're doing the vinyasa, you're sliding forward to plank, lowering down to your belly, rising up cobra. Because the breathing means something to you, not just because whatever other reasons you have for doing a vinyasa. Downward facing dog, not just because it was an option. Good. If you've been in child's pose, come back to down dog. Look forward between the hands, step or jump your feet to the top of your mat. Beautiful, nice. Forward fold, good. Remembering when you're jumping is the goal is always to jump and be able to straighten the legs as quickly as possible. So you don't wanna to jump to a straight leg, but you're not reaching for a squat usually, unless we say jump to squat. Hands to your hips, come all the way up to stand. The Ashtanga way is to jump forward as though you're going to immediately come to a straight legged position. Good, left knee up and towards your chest. 
squeeze in. Good, and then once you've got that knee, squeeze it up as high as it will go using your hands. Good, and then no hands, keep it up. Take the arms up to the sky. Pull through the sides of your waist, pull through your armpits, top of your right thigh goes back. Good, squeeze up, try and pull that knee even higher. There it goes, nice. And then left ankle comes on top of right thigh. Bend your right knee, pull your butt back as you extend out through your armpit. So again, you're not losing any of that side waist length as you come back into cross-legged chair, butt goes back. Go ahead, butt back, butt back, butt back. That chair is really far back behind you. Good, Allison. Nice, Lauren. Nice, Emily. Good, Harriet. Good, and then come all the way back up. Don't put that foot down. Squeeze that knee back up and towards your chest. Pull up. Top of your right thigh goes back. Yep. And then take that right leg back behind, sorry, left leg back behind you, warrior three. Chest comes forward. Push your butt up towards the sky. Don't lose that side body length. Pull. Armpits forward, hips back. Press back through that extended heel. Yes. And then release the hands down to the floor. Standing split. Good. Left hand stays where it is. Right arm, uh, no, sorry. Yep. Right arm comes to the sky. You got it. Good, keep pressing back through that extended heel and pull forward with your armpit. Uh-huh. Good, Lauren, take your hand so your thumb is closer to the top of your head. So more space but, uh, for your armpit, that's it. Good, release the hand down to the floor. Awesome, step back. Come back, downward facing dog. Good, deep breath in. And then slide forward to plank pose, upward push up. Lower down slow, coming through knees first if you need. Good, rise up into cobra, lift head, neck and chest. Good. And then exhaling back to your belly, please. Stay there. Hi, right, good luck on you. Bend your knees, please. Kick your heels in, reach back, right hand for right ankle, left hand for left ankle. Good, preparation for upward bow. Good, so if holding the feet is not an option, keep your hands alongside your ribs like you would for cobra. Good, don't let the knees splay wide, so hug the knees in. Good, and then bend your elbows a little bit, please. Yeah, and as you bend your elbows, I want you to feel that rotation of your arm bones in your shoulder socket. Good, now start to uh, press through the front of your pelvis, lift your thighs up, kick your feet into your hands, try and keep your elbows bent as you lift your chest up. Good, nice, nice, nice. Keep bending the elbows so that you keep the stretch in your chest and your shoulders. Good. Press your heels up towards the ceiling. So that'll help lift your thighs. Nice. Beautiful. And then slowly release. Beautiful. Take a moment on your belly. Turn one cheek to the side or make a pillow with your hands. If you meditate on the heart, you will come to understand the mind. It doesn't mean that the mind will become logical or that the heart will be logical. It means that we have a certain way of connecting in the world, connecting to each other, connecting to ourselves, and that we have to understand it from the inside, not the outside. If you wait for someone else to define for you what should make you happy and comfortable and fulfilled in this life is you will struggle. have to understand your own language. So that even when you are aware that you're asking for something irrational, you know what you're really asking for. An orange is not an orange. <laughs> Good, come up to Sphinx pose, please. So bring your elbows underneath your shoulders, press up onto your forearms. Good, and then bend your right knee, kick your heel in towards your butt, reach back right hand for the foot or the ankle. If you wanna turn your left forearm parallel to the top of your mat, you can, or keep it forward, whichever feels more supportive. Then you're drawing that right heel in towards your right butt cheek, keep your right hip facing forward though. So yeah, don't let it fly open, Emily. Good. And again, working through the shoulder as much as you are working through the thigh. So keep pressing through that left forearm, keep your chest lifted, almost like you're just doing upward bow again. Good, 
Kick your foot back into your hand, even though you are dragging the heel in. Add that pressure back. Good. And then release. Let that leg go. Good. Switch to the other side. So the right forearm can either parallel the top of your mat or it can just stay straight in front of the right underneath the shoulder. Left knee bends, reach back, left hand for the foot or the ankle. So same hand, same foot. Good. Making sure that the front of your pelvis is still moving towards level. So your left hip is not rolling open as everything is still moving square towards the floor, square towards the top of your mat. Good. Switch your hands, Maria. So you've got the, the same hand reaching for the foot. There you go. Good. Keep a little bend in the elbow so that, again, you're working through the shoulder, not just pulling through the arm. Kick your foot back into your hand. Root that thigh down. Good. Beautiful. And then slowly release. Nice job. Good. Plant your hands. Press up to hands and knees, please. Do a little cat and cow if you're being in that back bendiness. Good. Nice, Allison. Beautiful. And then drop down to your elbows again, please. Good. Interlace your fingers. Make a little cup with your hands. So like a headstand preparation, one pinky comes to the inside. So instead of having it underneath, you have it uh, just tucked in so that you have a flat edge. Good. Press down into your elbows, into your forearms. Tuck your toes, lift your hips. Come into down dog on your forearms. Good. Give a little squeeze of your elbows towards each other as though there's like a band around them. Squeeze in. Good. And then any amount, draw into that low rib cage, puff up through your back rib cage, start to walk your feet forward, taking your hips higher. Good. But keep pressing through the forearms, keep resisting. So no collapsing in your side body, pull your hips away from your armpits. Good. Nice, you can let the head hang here if you want, or if it's comfortable to keep the angle of looking forward towards your hands, you can let that happen too. It all depends on your shoulders. Good. I know, a couple more breaths, hang out there. We never hang out here. Awesome. And then walk the feet back, drop your knees to the floor, please. Child's pose. Good. Undo-ism. Undoing all of those layers and layers and layers of where we are trying to get something in all the wrong ways. What's that they say? Looking for love in all the wrong places. Looking for love in all the wrong languages. Good, walk yourself back up, please. Nice, sit on your butt, take your feet out in front of you. Plant the feet in front of you, take your arms back behind you, fingers pointing towards your heels. Good, so your feet should be hip width apart. Your hands can be a little wider than your shoulders here if your shoulders are a little cranky or tight. Good, if your hands need to turn out, again, this is, has to do with your shoulder capabilities. If your hands need to turn out slightly, that's okay. Just try not to turn them all the way backwards. Good. And then bend the elbows just a little bit. With the elbows bent, lift your chest. Good. And then ribs in, press into your feet, lift your hips, come into reverse table. Once you've got your hips up, then you can start to straighten the arms, but don't lock your elbows. Good. Keep your weight forward onto the balls of your feet. Nice. Chest up. Long spine. Pull your tail towards your heels and your sternum towards the top of your head. Good. And then right ankle to left thigh or right leg straight up to the sky, your choice. Nice, Emily. Good, Harriet. Nice, Mark. Good. Release that foot down to the floor. Don't give up. Other leg, either cross the ankle on top of the thigh or take the leg straight up. Good. Funny, your choice, right? I honestly think it's easier to just take the leg straight up. Good. Slowly release. But then again, you know. I'm crazy. Release your hips down to the floor. Bottoms of the feet together, knees wide. I think things are fun that other people don't think are fun. Arms to the sky. 
Baddha Konasana, deep breath in, pull through your waist, and then bow forward, please. Remembering that if you squeeze your knees, it supports your pelvis a little bit more. Good, and then release the hands down, relax the head. Nice job. Good, and then walk yourself back in, please. Cross the ankles, roll forward to hands and knees. Come back, downward facing dog. Good. Looking forward between the hands, step or jump your feet to the top of your mat. Nice. Good jumps. Straighten the legs, forward fold. Good. And then come all the way up to stand. You can do hands at your hips or take the arms around and up, whatever you'd like. Beautiful. All right, left leg, standing leg, pull your right knee up and towards your chest. Good, and then you're reaching with your right hand inside the knee for your ankle or your, uh, sorry, either your big toe or your baby toe side of the foot. So if you can reach your big toe, you can go for that or reach for the baby toe side. Good, and then that knee goes nice and high. Nice, now start to extend it. So same hand uh, to the foot mark, so switch your hand. Good, you're gonna extend that leg straight forward. I don't care if it can come straight or not but start to take it forward as much as you can. Pull back through the top of your left thigh. Good, kind of sweet here if you need to, to even bow towards the thigh a little bit more, come into almost like a standing forward fold. Good. And then bend the knee back in towards your chest. Yep, good. And then release it down, take a moment. Plant your feet, Tadasana. So arms alongside you, crown of your head lifts. Find Tadasana, so don't come out of the pose and go into weird freak out pose. Step yourself into something stable, right? How we come out of the pose is significant. When your energy is in that kind of crazed state, what you do with it is significant. Good, and now switch to the other side. Right leg, standing leg, left knee up and towards your chest. So the point of the Tadasana, right, is not to make the crazy go away. It's just to give you a moment for it to settle wherever it settles. Reaching the same hand to the foot, so left hand to the big toe or baby toe side. Good. Right arm can be at your hip or out to the side for balance. Start to extend that leg forward any amount. And again, it's perfectly okay if it's not going to come to straight today. That's not the point. Pull the top of your left thigh back. Maybe you play with leaning forward with your chest so that you can really press back to the top of your right thigh. Good. Nice, nice, nice. Awesome, Stephanie. Good, Harriet. And then bring yourself all the way back up. Bend the knee back in towards your chest. Good. And then release that foot down, coming straight back to Tadasana. Good. This is part of the benefit of why in a vin, you know, true vinyasa is you're moving just with the breath. So you never really have time to just stay in that fidgety place. You just keep moving the energy until it becomes steady and smooth. So when do you ever give yourself the chance to really listen to what you're asking for, to what you really need, instead of just jumping to the next thing, the next thing, the next thing, hoping that it's the right thing. Stop and listen, stop and feel. Good. Then right knee comes up in towards your chest. Cross your right thigh over top of your left, wrapping the thigh and the outer shin for eagle. Bend your left knee. Good, and then the left arm comes over top of the right in front of your chest, wrapping the arms as well, pressing the forearms towards each other. Good, so Laura, don't let your right hip dip. You gotta lift your right hip up and wide. Good, nice, navel in, ribs in, you guys. Yeah, and then drop the hips lower. Press your butt slightly back. Yeah, beautiful. Good, now as you start to come out of the pose, take your arms straight up to the sky, pull your right knee up and towards your chest as you straighten your left leg. Good, and then extend that right heel, extend your right leg forward, straight ahead, no hands. Good, that same muscle, pull up, press your butt back, press your left thigh back. Yeah, and then pull the knee back in towards your chest, no hands. 
and then step it down to the asana. I kind of like this. <laughs> Wasn't my intention to do this kind of thing in between the standing balance, but I like it. Why? Because I'm watching how fidgety you are. And since we've started doing this between, you are less fidgety. Maybe because you know where you're going. I don't know. But can you break the habit of being fidgety? So fidgety in yourself, so agitated that you'll reach for anything to distract you. Don't reach for anything. Reach for the right things, the things that actually feel like they are bringing you connection. Love. Good. Second side, left knee up and towards your chest. And if you don't know what those things are, well, that's the point of the practice, isn't it? Figure out your language. Left thigh comes over top of right. Good, bend that right knee. So you're wrapping the inner thighs and the outer shins. And then right arm comes over top of left, wrapping the arms as well. Good, so Maria, if you can, thigh all the way on top, not just, yeah, all the way over, all the way over, all the way over, all the way. Yep, so the knees are stacked. There you go. Yeah, and you're gonna press the shins. There you go, exactly. Good, you guys. Joanne, don't let your hips cock out to the right. Push them wider to the left. Good, ribs back, you guys. Butt goes back, but then lift your shoulders up so you're not leaning forward completely. You wanna still try to find vertical. Good, I know, unpopular way to do eagle. Awesome, as you slowly come out of the pose, pull your left knee in towards your chest, no hands, arms to the sky. Pull up through your side waist. Arms up means everything pulls up. Good, and then extend that left leg forward. Press out through the heel, scoop that low belly, press through the back of your uh, top of your right thigh, push back. Good, ribs in. Nice, nice, nice. Good, Mark, good, Emily. Good, pull that knee back in. Really good, Allison, you got it. And then release that foot, come back to Tadasana. Come back to Tadasana and listen. And we're asked to pay attention to our prana. Asana practice was not developed for yogis to have open hips and fantastic back bends and all of that. It was developed for them to be able to let the body's energy become smooth so that it wasn't disrupting. So the mind didn't have that to attach to, to be able to sit in meditation. And why sit in meditation? Because it is the purest, clearest way to understand that connection of what is your language of love? What is your language of unity? What is your language of togetherness, of oneness? How do you need to feel it and how do you need to express it? So we practice so that we can listen to that voice you cannot hear it through the ramblings of your mind. Your mind is 16, you know, variables away from what you're really asking for. Good. Nice, you guys. Bend your knees. Please take the arms up alongside your ears. Chair pulls. Good. Butt goes back. Yeah. Hands together at the heart center, please. Prayer twist, left elbow to the outside of the right knee. I know, I almost never twist to the right first. How did it happen? <laughs> Good. Press your knee against your elbow, your elbow against your knee, and then squeeze your armpits towards the center of your heart, back of your heart. Yeah. And come back to center, please. Don't change the chair, twist the other way. Right elbow to the outside of the left knee. Good. Again, squeezing the arms towards the back of the heart. Beautiful. Release the hands down to the floor, straighten the legs and bow. Good job. <laughs> right leg steps back behind you, please. Left leg follows downward facing dog. Good. And then drop down to your knees, please. Stretch your right arm out wide to the right. Slide that arm behind your left wrist, right shoulder finds the floor, thread the needle, walk the left arm forward towards the straight. Good. Beautiful. 
beautiful, you guys. If you'd like to take that left arm straight up towards the ceiling, turn the palm back and reach around for your outer right hip. So you're taking the little half bind or the bind for that arm. Keep lifting through your side ribs though. Again, the only purpose of that is to open through the chest, to open through the actual shoulder joint. You can't do that if your chest is still facing the floor. Good, release the arm please, back up towards center. Come back to hands and knees and go to the other side. Take your left arm out and wide, slide behind your wrist, right wrist. Good, and walk the right arm forward towards straight. Good. So that sensation of twisting the ribs and the hips in opposite directions, that's what you want. That's what creates the benefit of a twist, right? So you have to keep the pelvis stable, let the ribs rotate. If you're going for that variation with the arm, take the right arm up to the sky, turn the palm to face back, bend the elbow, reach around to find your outer left hip, but you're still pulling that arm bone up into the shoulder socket. And then you're working to stack the right shoulder on top of the left, stack the right rib cage on top of the left. Good. Nice, you guys. And then extend that arm back up towards the sky. Unwind it, release the hand back down. Good. Come to sit on your butt, take your legs out in front of you. Good, bend your knees, point your toes to the floor. Good, boat pose, so make sure that you are not sitting up on a rolled blanket. Finding your sit bones, take your hands to the backs of your thighs and then find your balance. So float the shins up parallel to the floor. Good, separate your knees, your feet just a little bit, keep the knees bent and then reach your arms forward, palms together between the knees. Good, and you're keeping that steady position of the hips and the, and the legs. Take your hands to the outside of your right knee, little twist. Good, and then back to center and then twist to the left. Good, and then back to center. Let your whole shoulders go with you though, Mark, to the right. Good, and center and left and center and just watch the funny things that your feet do keep going to the right and center and the left and center don't let your feet fall towards the floor keep your knees bent pull those thighs and keep going you don't need me to count for you good keep breathing exhaling on your twists good keep your chest lifted i know keep your feet the same width as your knees yeah i know good one more breath, back to center, squeeze your knees in, release your feet to the floor. Good, bottoms of the feet together, knees wide, Baddha Konasana. <laughs> I know, believe it or not, there's, there's much crazier versions of that that people do as actual like strength training workout things. So if you thought that was bad, imagine doing it with a weight. Imagine doing your whole life with more weight. <laughs> We don't need that. That's the thing is the mind adds weight to what the heart is already asking for. Makes it complicated. Good. Walk yourself back, please. Hold on to your ankles. Again, find that balance point on your sit bones, point your toes to the floor, hold your feet or your ankles, and then start to take your legs out either to that like balancing squat position or take the legs all the way out straight balancing straddle. Good. Nice. Beautiful chest up. Good. Yeah, be careful if you have furniture behind you. Awesome, you guys. And then bend the knees again. Nice, Susan. Good, Allison. Bring the feet back to the floor. Good job. All right, take your feet back flat in front of you. Knees bent. Take your right ankle on top of your left thigh. Yep, so like that cross-legged chair position. Yep, and then hands can come back behind you and all you're doing is drawing your belly towards your thigh, drawing your legs towards your belly. Good, if you wanna intensify the stretch, you pull your left heel deeper in towards your sit bone. Don't let yourself lean back onto the fleshy part of your butt. Stay on your tips of your sit bones. 
Good, that's how you keep the extension or the length on your lower spine. Flex the foot. I know, so it's like a really, really fun version of cross-legged chair or a really terrible version of pigeon, I don't know. <laughs> Depends on how you interpret things. Good, you have your hands to press into, so don't fall back into them. Don't let the shoulders collapse, keep lifting. Yeah. And you have a language, an inner language of what your real desires are, what your real needs are. And at some point we have to stop reaching for what doesn't fit. We can't just have an answer if it doesn't fit the question. So that's the undoing, undo the immediate reaching for what we always reach for. And start to listen so that when you know that you're saying outside, this is what I need, that inside you hear the dissonance where inside you're like, that's not what I need. What I need is this. At least recognize it. An orange is not an orange. <laughs> what you're asking for is not what you're reaching for. Good. One more breath. Nice. And then slowly release. Step that foot down to the floor. Go ahead and come into that reverse table position. Just plant the feet. Hands are already there. Lift your hips up off the floor. Ah. Stretch through the whole spine. Good. And then release the hips back down to the floor. Torture yourself on the other side, left ankle over right thigh. I know it's not torture because if you don't mind being there, then it's fine, right? It's only if we mind being there. <laughs> Good. And then again, you're finding the position that allows you to have length on your lower back. So you're not rolling back off of your pelvis. You're not rolling back on behind your sit bones. You're staying lifted. Flex the foot and lean forward. So you're taking your belly towards your thighs. Good. Chest up and wide. Beautiful. You're folding through the thigh creases, gets into your hamstrings, into your glutes, into your, all the things. And perhaps the, you know, my daughter repeats a lot of things, right? So whatever I say is she'll often just repeat it back to me, which makes it really extra difficult to figure out what she wants because she just repeats the thing that I suggest. <laughs> It's not what she wants at all. But when she was struggling last night, I did make the comment that I said, I really hear that you're struggling. I really feel that I can really see that you're struggling. And she repeated back to me very cheerfully, Ari is struggling. How often have you ever done that for yourself? Without trying to fix it, just said, I'm really struggling. <laughs> or just the baseline, this really hurts instead of reaching for what I think is going to make it feel better. Can I just sit with the sensation of this hurts? So again, if you wanna rent a toddler for a lot of spiritual realization, I have one. <laughs> you only need a couple of nights. You'll go places you never thought you'd go. Right, but it hits you, right? That as children, this is where we start to learn to reach for something to make it better without feeling what we feel or to understand what really makes it better. I want an orange. So when she's 35, she's gonna still be eating oranges in the middle of the night and have no idea why. <laughs> this is us. We're all that young individual developing in a body and a mind. Release your legs, please. Stretch them out in front of you, let your legs go wide. Good. You can use a blanket here underneath your seat if you'd like, and then forward fold. So can you start to realize how often and the things that you reach for habitually that have nothing to do with actually you feeling better. It's just what you do to convince yourself that you have an answer to that discomfort. 
the answer doesn't fit the question. It's not your language of love. So we undo that so that we can recognize that we have a language, a way that we need to feel it and the way we need to express it. Nice, Allison. It's fun to watch you try and lasso your feet. <laughs> Good, you guys. One more breath, please. If you want, take your right hand to your right ankle, your left hand to your left ankle. So you have something to hold on to. And then as you bend your elbows, let your chest come a little bit deeper and engage those upper arms so that your chest goes wider. So stretch for the shoulders, chest. Good. And then slowly release, please. Nice job. Bring the legs together. Come on down to your backs. Good. Stretch your legs up to the sky. Good. Find where your heels are in line with your hips. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit further away from your belly than you want it to be. Good. Nice, you guys. And then plant the arms alongside you and just little scoops to your belly, right? Almost like you're pretending that you're going to go up into shoulder stand, but using nothing but the, your legs and low belly. Lift your feet towards the sky. Uh huh. Good. Do it a couple times. So it's a little roll and then you release back down. Again, relax the shoulders. So no move in the shoulders, Joanne. No head involved. All low belly, all legs. Good. Do it a couple of times. Nice, you can go higher than that, Emily. I know you can. <laughs> no, I can't. Good. Nice, nice, nice. Beautiful, and then pause. If you would like to come into full shoulder stand, feel free to go there. If you would prefer to place a block underneath your seat, either with the legs up or in bridge pose, another option. Good, so you decide for you. Good. Nice, you guys. Looks very comfortable, Lauren. Good. Keep reaching through the legs if you're in shoulder stand. So again, even here, you're not losing any side body length. So you're pressing down through the arms, engaging those lower armpits, hugging towards the center of your back. And then from there, that kind of cupping in is what lifts the spine from the middle of your ribs to pull it longer, to pull your legs longer. It's exactly what you did standing up. It's just upside down. Good. If you meditate on the heart, you will come to comprehend your mind. And if you can comprehend what your mind has been trying to do, largely unsuccessfully, then you can start to shift the patterns of the mind to what's more effective, more efficient, less painful. Right, because it's painful to keep reaching for one thing and having it never be what we really want it to be. As I say, the mind adds weight. <laughs> so we undo so that we feel lighter, not because the mind makes any more sense, but because it's simply not adding excessive weight. A couple more breaths. You know, they say the benefit of inversions is that you should be in them for three to five minutes minimum. I know that sounds crazy, but you can work towards it. Good. And then slowly begin to find your way out of your position, dropping the feet to the floor if you're on a block, rolling down the spine one vertebra at a time if you are in shoulder stand. Pausing for a moment with your feet flat. Good. 
And then bringing the knees in towards the chest, take the knees wide for happy baby, reach for the ankles or the feet. Good, stacking the heels on top of the knees so your feet should be pointed at the ceiling. Good. And pelvis is the place of that roiling emotional self that does not care about the mind's organization. It does not care about any of the other suggestions of what would be good for it. It just says, I want, I want, and I need. And this is how I relate to the world. So until we understand that conversation, we struggle. Bring the knees back in towards your chest. Pelvic work, right? That's the benefit energetically. Scoot your hips over to the left, drop your knees to the right, spinal twist. Good, if it feels good to wrap the left thigh on top of the right, so a little um, wrapped twist, you can do that or just have the knees stack. Good. And then come back to center, please. And then you're scooting the hips over to the right. If you're wrapping the legs, your right leg comes on top of your left here and then drop your knees to the left. Or again, the knees can just be stacked. Good, and then unwind, come back to center, please. Squeeze your knees up towards your chest, bring your forehead up to meet your knees. Up on asana. I like to end class with this, is that energy of moving down and out. Whatever is done, let it be done. And then release, please, stretching the legs out in front of you. Palms come alongside you or arms alongside you, palms up. Settling for shavasana, make sure you're warm. Maybe breathe deep into that lower belly. So the pelvis has a feeling of freedom. So whatever emotions have been organized in a way that doesn't fit, undo it. Your heart will reorganize. Your heart will explain to the mind, this is what we need. And then with awareness as we can watch that the mind gives us what we need instead of reaching for something unassociated. So breathe first into the belly, the rest will follow.
Very gently, bring the awareness back to your breath. Letting the body begin to stretch and move in whatever way is serve it well. As you're ready, draw your knees in towards your chest and roll to your right side. Taking a moment there before you begin to push the floor away, come back to an upright seated position. Bring the hands together in front of the heart center, palm to palm, or whatever mudra you've been enjoying. And so this concept of you having a language of love is not for you to start judging whether you've been expressing your love appropriately in your life or if someone is not treating you well, it has nothing to do with that. It has everything to do with you understanding how you treat yourself. Because if you don't understand your own language is you will hold your own security and happiness and love from yourself because you're reaching for it in all the wrong places. So the importance is we write this relationship with ourselves. We write the relationship with our mind and our, and our heart so that we understand what it is that we need to feel that that love is real and the way that we naturally express it so that we're not constantly guessing. Maybe I need this, maybe I need that, maybe I should want this. Stop and listen. You already know what you need. The challenge is getting yourself to acknowledge it and then letting your mind figure out the way that you can actually have it. So we practice so that we undo all of those layers that are in the way of us just being able to feel our own language of love. And if you wanna go look up what those are, have fun, but don't put yourself in a box. You have your own language, practice to understand it. So that when you want an orange, it's just because you want an orange. It's not a substitute for something else. We'll close with the sound of Om, deep breath in. Sliding the thumbs up to the space between the eyebrows. Namaste. Thank you guys so, so much. Have a great rest of your night, a great rest of your week until I see you again. Just a reminder, what was my Monday class is now on Thursday. So if you've got nothing to do tomorrow at 4.30, come back. It's when we do the focused flow, breaking down poses uh, more mechanically. So it's a lot of fun if you haven't tried it yet.